What is borderline personality disorder? We hear people talking about this all the time in the narcissistic abuse recovery community, but not everybody is aware of what it actually is. So that's what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. Let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. According to my research, borderline personality disorder, also called BPD, is a really serious mental illness. People who suffer from it find themselves feeling really shaky when it comes to moods. They kind of bounce around in the mood department and they also feel kind of unstable in that way. Their self-image they struggle with it. Their personal relationships, they struggle with them. Their own behavior is a big struggle for them sometimes. And it often causes disruption in their families, in their workplaces, and much more. Originally, the name was created because people thought that people who had BPD were right on the border of psychosis and neurosis. And what it comes down to is that they suffer from emotional dysregulation. They can't regulate their own emotions very easily. Although a lot of people have never heard of BPD, it does affect about 2% of adults. People with BPD are known to be self-injurers. So they might be cutting or they might be doing other things to physically harm themselves. Sometimes they are known for creating stress in families and friend groups. Sometimes they have suicidal behavior and in some cases they actually succeed. The risk for harm and injury in this particular disorder is greatest when someone's a teen or a young adult. And as they get older, the risk tends to decrease. More women than men are diagnosed with BPD. About 75% of the diagnosed cases are female according to my research. As you might imagine, someone who struggles with BPD might really need a lot of clinical and psychological assistance to get through this. And even though there's only 2% of the population of adults who have been diagnosed with BPD, that group accounts for up to 20% of all psychiatric hospitalizations, which I think is very significant. But a lot of them are able to live completely healthy lives, normal lives with that kind of help, whether they need to be hospitalized or not. If they're getting the proper type of medical and psychological help they can be as productive as anyone else in the world they can be as happy as anyone else in the world if they just take care of themselves so let's talk about the BPD symptoms symptoms like depression anxiety serious bouts of anger they might last hours or at the very most a few days in most cases of course these are also associated with things like impulsive aggression or drug abuse alcohol abuse again self-injury and a lot of times this could be misdiagnosed as bipolar because they have the ups and the downs people with BPD BPD will often also experience big distortions in their self-image and, the, and how they see themselves, how they feel about themselves. They struggle with their sense of self and also in their relationships. Sometimes they do this whole, you know, jumping from one relationship to the next. Same for jobs, friendships, identity, values. All of those things can be changeable with someone with BPD. Sometimes they just see themselves as just fundamentally bad or unworthy. Maybe they feel bored, they feel empty, they feel misunderstood, mistreated. A lot of times they just don't even really know who they are. Here's the thing, these symptoms are most often seen in people with BPD when they're not getting emotional support, when they're getting verbally or emotionally abused by someone like a narcissist, for example. Someone with BPD, like a narcissist, is unable to feel comfortable being alone, so sometimes they'll do anything they have to to avoid being alone. Their social situations are murky at best. In many cases, they do develop attachments to people. They tend to be very intense attachments and it's kind of stressful for both parties involved. But like a narcissist, someone with BPD will go from idealizing a family member or friend to demonizing that person or devaluing that person. At that point, they may go ahead and form another immediate attachment to another person, which they do to avoid being alone. They're idealizing the new person, and then interestingly enough, when they see that that person isn't you know, perfect, they often kind of feel a big conflict or a big rift between them and that new person they've attached to. I know, you're going, well, how is this different from NPD? Because it sounds so similar, and in fact, it's often mistaken for NPD. At that point, you know, when they've gone through that, they'll accuse the other person of, of not caring about them at all in that situation when they have that feeling in their head. People who are not perfect personality disordered in any way or who don't have this particular personality disorder, they might be okay with understanding. Most people are okay with understanding that, you know, just because you're angry at someone doesn't mean you don't care about that person anymore and vice versa. Well, people with BPD, just like people with NPD, they don't see that. It's either good or bad. It's all or nothing for these people. People with BPD are very sensitive to rejection. Even short separations 
make them feel anxious and depressed and stressed out. Like a, a vacation, a business trip, anything like that can totally push them over the edge. It causes them to feel worthless when their people that they love are away from them. Again, they feel abandoned, they feel upset. They might show up with new, like, impulsive behaviors. They might be a little more risky in the boudoir area. They might be struggling with binge eating or self-harm or any number of impulsive things that, you know, drugs and alcohol, things like that. Things that they wouldn't normally do, but they kind of indulge in in order to kind of push past whatever it is that is making them feel angry or sad or depressed or anxious. Like NPD, BPD, the cause is t officially unknown, but just like NPD, BPD, BPD is potentially caused by both physical or genetic components as well as the environment that they grow up in and the environment that they're in. Because of their impulsiveness, adults with BPD are more likely to be the victims of violent crimes, sexual abuse, things like that. And researchers say that it's possible that BPD was caused by, again, similarly to narcissism, neglect in childhood or abuse in childhood, emotional, physical, or otherwise. Also, people with BPD unfortunately have a hard time choosing good partners. And so sometimes they end up with narcissists and that is not healthy for anyone involved. Now I'm not going to go into all the scientific details of this today, but I will tell you this. There are differences between NPD and BPD and tomorrow in my next video, I'm going to share with you exactly what those are. So let me know your thoughts right now. This is the question of the day. Do you or does someone you know have BPD and what would you add to this basic, very condensed list of symptoms and facts about BPD? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comments section below and let's talk about it. Okay, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you in the cards above and right here and right here. Oh, and don't forget, hit that subscribe button right there so we can continue on this healing journey together. Don't forget, you're never alone. You've always got your spanily. All right, that's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon.